Hi, I'm Jeff Potts. I'm the ECM Practice Director at Optaros, and I also write a blog called ecmarchitect.com. Um, if you've been following the blog, you know that uh, we've been doing a lot at Optaros lately with Drupal and Alfresco working together. And we did a uh, webinar on this not too long ago uh, with Alfresco that uh, talks about some work that we did at a, at a game publisher uh, for an intranet that we built for them that uses Alfresco and Drupal. And a lot of people were interested and uh, wanted to see more and, and wanted to see this live, so we decided to build a quick sort of intranet demo uh, that injects some Alfresco. And uh, rather than do it with just raw uh, Drupal, we decided to start with a, an open source project called Open Atrium, which is uh, basically an intranet in a box. So we took Open Atrium, which is um, Drupal, and then themed a certain way, and then with certain Drupal modules added to make it uh, essentially a team collaboration tool. And then we used the Seamus Alfresco uh, module to hook into an Alfresco repository. And it was just a, a very basic integration from a technical standpoint. It's not uh, rocket science, but it just gives you a little bit more of a feel for what it can mean when you take something like a Drupal front end and, and combine it with formal uh, document management in, a, in an uh, open, robust repository like Alfresco on the back end. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is the uh, Atrium login page. And by the way, I'm not going to do a full uh, open Atrium demo here. Um, you can definitely, it's easy to get it downloaded and play with. Uh, on your own. So um, what I want to kind of focus on is uh, exactly how it's working with Alfresco here. So I'll go ahead and log into the Sumco intranet. And just to give you a feel for for what Atrium is, you know, we're, we're seeing here the latest, uh, this is sort of like a global dashboard uh, concept where we can see the latest wiki page, we can see uh, the latest blog entry. Um, we can see sort of an activity stream of things that are going on around the intranet. So the idea here is that you would have several uh, team sites or project sites uh, that are called in, in Atrium, they're called groups, and it uses the, the Drupal organic groups module to do this. But these groups would be, you know, created for formal teams or informal teams or whatever and they would use it to to collaborate so we can see there's a there's a calendar here that's showing uh, calendar entries from the groups that I belong to so this is only going to show uh, things that I have access to see recent comments uh, an enterprise-wide kind of welcome uh, block important announcements things like that then we can get into the groups. If I click on the groups list, I can see the groups I belong to. So I can see, um, actually, this is a list of, of all the groups, so uh, all the public groups, human resources, marketing, sales. If I go to my groups, I can see uh, the groups that I belong to. So this might include groups that are private. So the senior leadership team forum is a group that not everyone can see. Uh, the sum customer incorporated group is something that not everyone can see. Then if we drill into one of these human resources, uh, for example, you'll see that there are these uh, features across the top and every group gets to decide which features they're using. So this one has a dashboard, a blog, a document library, calendar, shoutbox, which is like a Twitter uh, sort of microblog functionality, and a wiki. Um, Let's go take a look at uh, how this might look for a different group. So if I go back to groups and we go to marketing, we can see that they have a different set of features enabled. So they have a blog and a document library, but they also have Alfresco and a, and a to-do or a case tracker uh, feature turned on. So let's take a look at the Alfresco feature. And I realize that there's a bug that uh, all these other features appear clicked when you 
uh, click them, uh, except for our, our Alfresco one does not, just because of uh, some uh, URL redirects that we're doing there, but I'm sure we can fix that. Um, so what you're seeing now is, um, if you've ever seen the Alfresco Seamus module demonstrated, you've seen the Seamus repository browser. And so what we've done is we've just created an atrium feature that exposes the Seamus repository and um, and now when I click on it I can browse the folders and content that are stored in Alfresco. So I can jump in here and uh, maybe I want to create a new folder. So I'm in the marketing folder, maybe I want to create a new folder uh, called, let's call it campaigns. Create a new folder and now that's created a new folder in Alfresco. So if we had um, rules or behaviors on the Alfresco side that were triggered by the creation of a new node in the repository, those would have just triggered. Um, as an example of that, let's jump into the white papers folder and let's upload a Word doc. So I'll do upload content and let's go uh, browse for some content here. And I'll just grab this sample word metadata.doc and click upload. There it is. Now what you'll notice is that the sample word metadata.doc was automatically transformed into a PDF by Alfresco. That's because I have a rule configured on the white papers folder that says anytime someone drops a, a doc into this folder, automatically generate a PDF. And if you've, if you've never used Alfresco, just know that that's a really easy thing to do. There's no coding required. You just uh, configure that within the UI. It's, it's a pretty simple thing to do. Well, another thing that um, Alfresco can do uh, that's handy sometimes related to document management is workflow. So let's go take a look at what the sales guys are doing over here. If I go into the sales space, we go back to Alfresco and let's say that there's a, um, a workflow or a business process around uh, contributing sales plans to uh, to a sales, the sales director who then reviews those and approves them or rejects them. So maybe I want my sales managers to use this interface to contribute their sales plans um, and then I'll put them in the appropriate folder based on whether I approve or reject. Now obviously this is a very very simple business process. Uh, you could make this as complex as you want and you don't have to do things, you don't have to do something as simple as move things from folder to folder. You could set some metadata, you could change the permissions, you could transform the content from one to from one format to another. It really, you know, you could make calls out to a, a third party uh, system of some kind. It doesn't matter. Um, anything that you can think of with your business process, you can model that in Alfresco's workflow. So what I've done is I've created a Dropoff folder and um, let's go uh, again, let's upload a piece of content here. So I'll grab this, we'll pretend this is my uh, sales plan. And I'll do an upload. And then, yeah, it looks like I've got some junk in here from something else I was doing, but basically the, the file that I just uploaded, sample a.pdf, is not listed here anymore. And why that is is because I had a rule configured that says anytime I put something in the Dropoff folder, I want you to immediately launch um, a workflow and move that document out of the Dropoff folder and into the Review folder. So if I go look at Review, we should see and there it is, sample b.pdf. Now, um, it would be uh, pretty common for people to want to work with that workflow from within their intranet um, UI over here and I just we haven't written that code yet and that's one thing and the other thing is that's workflow is not part of Seamus um, so that's not a big deal and if we write the code it'll just be separate from the Seamus module but let's 
So to work with the workflow that got kicked off, let's jump over here to the web client. This is the Alfresco web client. If I go look at uh, my Alfresco dashboard, I can see, oh, okay, I need to review this sales plan. Somebody has submitted this for me to review. I can click on this. I can launch the uh, sales plan and look at it. I could look at its properties. I could uh, look at the workflow uh, history to see who has looked at this and what actions they've taken. But let's just keep it simple and uh, do an approve. I'll click approve. That's the last task I have, and, and I'm done. So I'll just log out of Alfresco. Let's jump back over here. And now if we go back to uh, the review folder, we refresh that. The sales plan is gone, and we should expect it uh, to be sitting in the approve folder now. And there it is, sample b.pdf. And I can look on the, uh, I didn't show you this earlier, you can look at the properties and it pulls up the properties of the document. I, this would be, you would want to make this a lot prettier, obviously. We're just dumping all the uh, properties that come back from the CMS call here, but um, just to show you that it's possible to do that kind of stuff. So that's, uh, those are, so we've seen um, a rule that automatically transforms something from one format to another, and we've seen a rule that kicks off a workflow. Another nice thing about Alfresco is to treat the repository as if it's a file system. So if I switch over here to Finder, um, what we're looking at in this top Finder box up here is we're actually looking at the um, Alfresco repository. And if I go into um, Sales, for example, I can see there's the Sales Plans folder and there's the approved, drop off, rejected uh, review folder. And I could drop, drag and drop files into any of these um, folders and have something happen. Drop it into to the sales plans folder. Actually, that may have been the parent of that folder, but that's okay, no big deal. And let's just look over here, go back to, go back to Atrium and go into the sales folder and we should see the sample C PDF and we do it just got dropped in so you know you have options for how you get content into the repository I can use the the uh, the intranet UI and either create the content directly here or upload it or I can drag and drop it in my uh, finder or Windows Explorer or whatever FTP is another option uh, emailing is another option because Alfresco can act like an SMTP listener. IMAP if I want to uh, work with the repository from my uh, Outlook client or something like that. So lots of options and um, this just shows one example of how we can use CMIS from Drupal to work with Alfresco. Um, obviously if, if you've seen other CMIS uh, Drupal demos you know that the module can do a lot more we can do uh, synchronization, uh, for example. But in this simple demo, everything that you see in this CMS repository window here lives in Alfresco. It does not live, live in Drupal. So that's it. I hope you uh, think it's cool. I mean, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of uh, work to do to, to make it even better. And we would love to hear feedback and see if this is something that you'd like to use uh, in your org organization. Thanks.